All right, first, first of all, appreciate y'all being here. Um, appreciate the fans that, that, uh, that were here, um, and, and they were loud. You know, it seems like anytime we have one of these bad weather games, whether it was second half of Kansas after the lightning delay, um, the people that are here um, are really loud. And, and so I appreciate them. I thought they were a factor in the game several different times, so I appreciate that. Um, really good team win when you talk about it. Uh, two, really two team stats stick out. We won the turnover battle one to nothing, and we scored on that turnover. Uh, so points off turnover, which is probably the most important stat, was seven to nothing. And then the middle eight, last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second half, uh, we dominated that, and it was 14 to nothing. I really felt like that, that was where the game was won. We did a really nice job of, in, in, I think about this a lot like in NBA basketball, it's how you finish halves. I thought we did a really good job of finishing both halves um, today. Defensively, we bounced back. Really proud of those guys, proud of the staff. Um, we thought we tackled well. We contained the run game. We didn't, I didn't have any preconceived notions that we were going to stop it. But I thought we contained it. And, and really, uh, other than they hit us on a double move, which credit to them, we were really close to, to sacking him. They hit us on a double move. They had one explosive pass play that really hurt us. And, they, and then we played soft covers there that last drive, trying to get them to eat some clock. And, they, and they, they moved the ball a little bit. But other than that drive, those two drives, pretty pleased with how we played. Um, we had one takeaway, which was huge. I thought special teams, really hard on those guys. Last week, I thought Michael Hayes and Ali Straw both bounced back in a big way. Michael made a big field goal, but his kickoffs uh, were huge. You know, they had Harvey back there returning kicks. Uh, the one he brought back, we were able to tackle. Um, and our coverage units, kickoff coverage, has been really good all year. We're one of the top coverage, kickoff coverage teams in the country. They showed up today. And then Ollie Straw, you know, other than the penalty, uh, had a big day. He, his penalty negated his big moment. He, he planted one inside the two, and he got a penalty. But, man, he was, he was really good. He was really good. And I knew – I know what kind of people those guys are, um, Michael and uh, – and Ali, so zero surprise that those guys bounced back and had big games. And then Preston Fox is, is really growing into that role. He did a nice job on kickoff returns today, continues. I think the hardest thing to do, especially in the rain, is catch punts. And he's, he's become uh, great at that. Offensively, just kind of slow and methodical, man. We controlled the game, 12 of 18 on end of possession downs. We were 4 of 4 on fourth down. Um, five and five in the red zone. I don't really count that taking a knee. You know, so every time we were in the red zone, we scored. And we had zero turnovers in not ideal conditions. And so, um, and, and more so, I thought our guys competed. You know, they fought. And that's one thing, like, <clears throat> it hadn't always gone our way. And, but our guys always show up and they compete. You don't ever have to worry about them fighting. I and mean, I talked, I did, I did something yesterday where somebody asked if we would show up. And I said, there's no question. Like, our guys always show up and they fight and they competed. And so I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the 30 guys that I don't know if all of them will play their last, if that was all of them's last game. But, you know, probably 25, 26 of them, that was probably their last game in Mountaineer Field. And so happy they can um, really take in country roads, um, you know, one last time here. And then we still got a lot to play for. You know, we got a lot to play for, you know, get to seven wins. Um, we got an opportunity to win six conference games in the Big 12. You know, we got a chance to have, I think, the best back-to-back -back years uh, with Big 12 record. Opportunity to go six and three back-to-back. That would be the best two-year run uh, since we joined the Big 12 um, within, within the conference. And uh, I think people have kind of overlooked that, but that's, that's important to us. And so we got, still got a chance to do that. So, Greg, start us off. We'll start at the end a little bit with that last drive. I mean, two times you go for fourth down. Uh, yep. You're up 10, so it may be a tad bit. Risky, and not only you go for it, but you throw for it. So your thought process and, and what confidence did you have in your quarterback and receivers to make that decision? Yeah, well, so I think in, somebody was just asking me kind of thought process uh, down below. And so when you get in those games, and when you get there, it's a, it's a two-possession game. Field goal really doesn't do anything for you because they can still score two touchdowns and beat you. Um, and then you've got, if you keep making first, you got an opportunity to end the game. And, and I think we ran off almost – almost six minutes at the end of the game. And so anytime we got an opportunity to do that, we're going to take that. And the risk um, is, is lower than the reward. And, and so that's the thought process. Well, the fourth and three, that was a no-brainer. We felt really good about that. Um, J-Rob is a big body. It's a quick slant. Uh, we ran the same play against Arizona and converted on fourth down, about the same part of the field, really. Um, 
And then the fourth and nine, again, the field goal. So the thought process is this. You're up 10. If you go out there and kick a field goal, it's 13. All right. Well, the, the bad thing that could happen on a field goal is they could block it and run it back for a touchdown. So worst case scenario, you don't get it. They got two minutes and, what, 20 seconds to go, and they got to go approximately 75 yards, and then they got to score twice to beat you. And so um, I just think it's better to go for it right there, which we did. We were going to throw it. You know, um, we were going to throw it. And we had a look play on. They showed zero bailed out of it. Thought the quarterback did a nice job kind of sliding in the pocket. And that was a tremendous catch by Hudson. And, and he's been clutch. You know, like Garrett really trusts him going to him in some big situations. And that was, a, that was a tremendous catch. And it's always good if you can put the victory team out there. Neil, uh, CJ looked possessed on the first two uh, possessions. Can you talk about his play early on? Yeah, he started the game. And so I think this might have been his first start of the year. And, and he earned the right to do that. And he's a tough tackle, and, and he did. We had some short yardage gains there that he wasn't going to be denied. And so when he does, when he runs like that, and I think he's starting to figure it out. Got to remember, he hadn't always played this position. So when he figured, like, he's 240 pounds, and when he gets behind his pads, like, he's a really tough tackle. And, and I, th I was really pleased with how he played today. He, and, he, and he got injured in the first half and came back and, and battled through that. How's his health? Yeah, he's going to be fine. He's, he's sore. You know, those are tough yards. You know, we, we – he and Garrett both will be sore. Jaheim will be sore. You know, we uh, we ran for 200, but it was it was earned. Is this what you wanted to see when you talked about you know, all three phases playing well together? Well, this, yeah, this is exactly. I thought this is, and I was telling somebody just a second ago, this is one of the few times all year, you know, probably going back to the Oklahoma State game. You know, we've won some games, but this is the first time we're all three phases. Now, we'd like to be more explosive on offense. You know, you look at your stats and – um, I, when I saw the stat sheet, I'm like, oh, I thought we had more yards than that because I thought I felt like we really controlled the game offensively. Um, so, and we would like to have been more explosive, and we would like throwing the ball, but it was nasty in the first half. I know you jokers are up in the press box uh, eating free food and stuff, but like, it was nasty. It was nasty in the first half, um, and so to hold on to the ball and in those conditions have zero turnovers and, and kind of control the. The, the game was good on offense. And then I was really proud of how our defense and special teams responded. You yeah, move around, uh, move Reed and a couple of backers around a little bit. It looked like he was playing outside. Yeah, we played. Something a little different. What, when so we played a lot of 4-3 today. And so, um, and a couple reasons behind that. They're a really good rushing team. And we just want to get bigger. And Reed and, and Trey are both quality players. And, um, at Spear, we've been up and down since Aubrey got hurt. And so um, I thought KK played too many snaps last week. And so we really split those and played a 4 2 5 when K KK was in the game. And I thought him playing fewer snaps, actually, he played better. And then when we went 4 3 personnel, um, did the same things out of both. Uh, that was it gave us bigger to the field. And so um, it's hard to throw those perimeter screens when you got a 235 pound guy out there. It's a little, little harder to move. So that was, that was the thought process. And you, the, the pass defense, I think I was looking at his lowest pass yardage allowed all year, second lowest percentage allowed all year. I mean, you're talking about the 4 3. Is there anything else that, that, that kind of that you guys did that led to being so effective today? Well, those? first of all, they want to run the ball. Um, and so that's kind of who they are. Um, now they've thrown it a little bit better. And then the conditions are new for them. And, and uh, we play a little bit tighter, especially to the field, so didn't give up as many easy throws. Um, but that was really the only only adjustment. Did it feel weird to start on defense? Did it feel weird to start on defense? I knew you were going to ask that, Mike. That's my thing, yeah. <laughs> I, we were going to take the ball. They chose to take it. Yeah. yeah. So that, is that the first time in how long? 18 games. Yeah. So we still scored when we got the ball, though. Right, yeah. And you got one at the end of the half, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, just, just to put a bow on that, it wasn't always your choice to make it, but like you do like to have the ball first. Yeah. I, well, there's multiple reasons. Some of them I'll get into here and some of them not. I think that. I think we're pretty good on offense. We, we usually play well early. Our opening script's pretty good. Uh, we feel pretty good about that. We usually practice from Tuesday on, so there's a lot of repetitions in that. Um, we're able to work it versus a bunch of different looks. Um, but yeah, they won the toss, and Gus chose to take it, which I don't blame him. You know, when you're on the road, I think that makes a lot of sense sometimes. You know, I think sometimes coaches just get in the habit of defer. You know, there's been times where we've been really good on defense that we defer all the time, too. Um, but. Um, you know, but yeah, it did feel a little weird. I knew it'd been a long time. Um, and you said 18? 18. Last year, Houston was the last time. Is that right? Well, better outcome than that.
uh, talk about the weather a little bit being nasty out there in the first half. Obviously, there are some negatives to the weather, you know, trouble holding on to the ball sometimes. What are some of the positives to an environment like that at home? The weather's not good. They're coming out here from Florida where it's warm weather, sunny all the time. How do you use that to kind of get the energy up? Well, we practiced in it. You know, I think the only advantage is is we really practiced in it on Thursday and Friday. We haven't had – I got to be careful because last time I talked about the weather, y'all blew it up. So I, I'm not going to – I got to be careful talking about the weather too much. But uh, so on Thursday – we haven't had much cold weather here. We really haven't. Thursday and Friday, we had one day a couple weeks ago. But Thursday and Friday is really the first time it's been cold here. And we just practice out in the elements. So what we do is we just tell our guys, hey, we have an indoor. <laughs> we, you know, we could have practiced inside. But that doesn't give us a competitive edge. At Central Florida, you know, they're in Orlando. It's not – they're not having to deal with the snow and, and the rain and, and 40 degree temperature. So we practice in the rain in upper 30s, lower 40s on Thursday outside. And then yesterday, um, our guys were about like my nine-year-old son when it, when it snows. We went out and played in the snow for practice. And so uh, – so we were at least accustomed to being out there. I think that's the only real advantage. Garrett had a little bit of a shaky start, but then that one series, I think he had four or six, uh, you know, march down the field. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just talk about him, you know, catching on. You know. Well, the kid's a winner. Yeah, he's just, man, he competes. Um, I'm really happy for him that he performed and won in his last game here. Um, I think he deserves that. Uh, I hope our fans appreciate him. You know, um, he uh, he hasn't always played clean football, but man, he's laid it on the line for the Mountaineers every single time he suited up, and and so uh, fitting in for him, and he took a couple of victory laps, and he uh, he he earned that. Um, but really happy for him. He missed a couple of throws. We didn't protect very well early. You know, that's the thing. We had some downfield throws that were wide open that I'll wait tomorrow, until tomorrow to be upset about. But we had some – and we just didn't protect very well. We didn't – we didn't. They hit us on some blitzes. They really pressured us more. That's the one thing coming off the, the bye week. They hadn't been a big pressure team, but they really pressured us a lot. And so – and we didn't handle some of those pressures very well. You mentioned uh, Garrett right now, but the rest of the senior class, they still now have two games left. But mm -hmm. having just played their last game at home, how would you define their legacy as a class now that – yeah, I don't, I don't think you can define it yet because we got two games left. Um, you know, Creedy was asking me this other day, and I'm really just not in retrospective mode. Yeah, at some point I will be, and I'll be able to give you a better answer, but I'm really not right now. You know, I'm, I'm happy we won. Go out here and hang out with the people I got in town. Uh, we got some recruits here. Uh, worry about Texas Tech, and then – whatever after that, and then we'll, we'll worry about being retrospective, but not, not right now. Greg, you, you ready? You mentioned uh, offensive line a little bit. Uh, you started different center, though Brandon rotated in. Mm -hmm. what, what was your thought he, he didn't practice. He got injured. If you remember, he didn't finish the game last week, and uh, so he was injured. He actually didn't practice all week. And just like Trider, Trider didn't practice all last week, so we waited a series or two to get him in. Same thing with Brandon. Um, but Landon, I thought, did some good things. I think it speaks well to the future. Um, but we were definitely wanting to play Brandon. He's been here six years. Man, he's been a great teammate, really good player. Played in a ton of games here. And so, uh, yeah, he's probably close to a record. I don't know. He's probably close to a record for Mountain. Uh, did he? He broke it? Yeah, so that, I think. Um, but he didn't practice all week, and that's why, that's why Landon started. Yeah, I, I know that the goal of the year was Big 12 title, but what does being ball eligible guarantee postseason? That wasn't the case before. Today. That's better than alternative. You know, it's better than alternative. I mean, I think we're still alive for third place in the league, second or third place in the league. That's kind of what we're fighting for now, you know. And um, if we win, mind if we win, we, we'll go – if we got a chance to have a perfect record on the road if we go on the road and win, right? We lost – we ain't lost on the road, have we? Yeah, big 12 play? Not in the league. Yeah, big 12, yeah. So, I mean, we got that in play. And like I said, getting the six wins, big deal. What can you say about Wetsy from that's Trayvon now being out, so he's got to step up. What can you say about what Yeah, that's what I said earlier about him is he's, he's clutch. I mean, he really has. You know, look at – you think about all the big catches he's made. Um, and he's fearless. Um, he works. He's a little beat up himself. But practices hard on Tuesday and Wednesday, pays the price, and goes out and delivers. And so really happy for him. Really okay. happy for him. Along the lines of kicking off first today, how important was it to get a three and out, especially after last week? Yeah, huge. Yeah, huge. I thought it – the, we we generated and and we generated it 
um, momentum at the start of the game. You know, little thing, we had a touch, we, we had a touchback on the very first kick. That's huge. Okay. We come out and we force a three and out, and then we go down and score seven nothing. They turn it over, and then it's 14 to nothing. And the game really wasn't in jeopardy. They, they, they don't get me wrong, they played well. Uh, they, they continued to keep it close, but there was never a time when you were like, I don't know if we're going to win this. You know, because it was 14, and then it never got it never got closer than 10 after that. I think the, uh, the fourth, four, three, three, four, whatever you said that helps you out in the perimeter yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Are you baking anything else in the game plan to make sure you can't be targeted or picked on in I don't know familiar ways or scouting report ways? Yeah, we. I mean, we put our our spur. We dropped him a little bit more to the boundary. Um, that's another big body, Ty French, Ty Bradley. Uh, but that's that. Those are really the only things we did. To build a little bit on the uh, bowl eligibility question, um, it's been an up and down year, especially compared to expectations, and there's been negative discourse. How does it feel to be able to kind of shed some of that and go out and be bowl eligible at the very least? Yeah, I'm just happy for our guys, really. Um, you know, happy for our seniors, happy to get to six. Um, we've been up and down. Like, I don't hide from that. Really. We've, been, we've been up and down. Um, you know, if we can get to six wins, you know, that's something that we'll feel good about as a, as a program. Like I said, it's never been done. And so if we can do that back-to-back -back years, we feel, we'll feel good about that. Um, you know, we're going to strive to get to seven. You know, we'll, like I said, we'll reflect back and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've won several times as underdogs. I think that, that's, that, that says something, too. Coach, um, you see have changed play callers two games ago. Um, and you handled their offense pretty well from the prep, like you said from the very beginning uh is there what is there something you saw in preparation that made you guys so efficient at handling their offense well i don't know if we handled i think what we did is we kept the ball away from them first of all and 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 we put them in some must pass situations which is not necessarily who they want to be um they're really good on offense i mean you, all you gotta do is you, you look at the st statistics and the national rankings and they're really high and I have utmost respect for Gus Malzahn. And I'm, I'm probably – I'm confident in saying he's got his hands on the game plan, even though he's not calling it. And Tim Harris is a really good football coach. He's been doing it for a long time, and he's earned the opportunity to call plays. Um, and so we were able to, to, to get him in some third and longs today and then get ahead, and then we played we, – we kept the ball away from him. You know, we ran um, – we ran 75 plays. They ran 55. We had the ball for – 37 minutes they had it for 22 and so they didn't have a whole lot of opportunities i think that was as big as big a factor as anything but all right thank you all.